Wow. Okay, while I agree that these lasagnas both look and smell like a diaper fire, you can't give the entire class an F. Can't I? You can't! The very fabric of the school is based on the fact that home ec is an easy A. Okay, what are you even doing here? My entire offensive line took your class. If you fail them, we have no football team. Well, that's on them because they can't cook for Whoa, whoa. Dear God, whoa, Mom. Whoa. Look, boys take home ec to boost their depressingly low GPAs. So it's not important to learn the science behind the three C's, cooking, cleaning, and cheesing? Sure, in a pinch. A guy's got to know how to make a manwich or scrub a bowl if a lady caller's stopping by, but your class is too hard. Well, if you ask me, the only blow-off class around here is gym. I could replace you with a pair of shorts, a Jane Fonda video, and a whistle. You think you could just buy these shorts? Huh? You can, but you have to buy them at a special store for coaches. Okay, stop. Stop. Everyone calm down. Beverly, here's the thing. Home ec is and always will be a blow-off class. Ha! Face! What? That'll teach you to try to teach me. I see. Uh, then I guess I have nothing in the world to offer anyone. Yes. Good. We're in agreement. Everyone gets an A. Now, if you don't mind, I'm late for class. Jamie here. Oh, you're right in front of my face. I have to give Jamie a squeeze because um, she got up at 5 a.m., according to the Twitters. Good Round of applause you. for Jamie getting up yeah. at 5 a.m. Yeah. Oh, my Everybody. goodness. Right, Wendy. Now, I got to get up Yeah, here just maneuver. Oh, oh, we're going to lose a mug here. No, nope, you got it. You've got it. Expert, See? expertly there done. Go. Round of applause, oh. ladies and gentlemen. Wendy oh. McClendon Covey. Thank you. <laughs> there's gonna be uh, there's gonna be a lot of applause breaks. That's, That's hard to look at. Is that a, is that a bit much? That's is a that... lot. That's stunning. It's like, ah! <laughs> I gotta say, but before we, first of all, thank you so much for being here. I'm and thrilled joining to us be today. here. I'm so excited to have you. Thank uh, you. I, you know, in doing my research, I've been keeping a close eye on just uh, some, some of the stops you've been making along your tour on this particular run, and your wardrobe has been on point. I gotta say, is she thank not Thank you. She looks fantastic, doesn't she? Thank Absolutely. you. And I guess what? I do way. it myself. Yeah. I do it myself. Yeah. And it is so nice to be in regular clothes. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. You know, they say it takes a village. No, no. just one person. No, no, no. Yeah, just one. One person village. You. That's. <laughs> what can I say? But thank you. That's no, very nice. Of course. Well, thank you again for being here. And congratulations uh, on, and I, I mean this sincerely, I'm one of the, the best uh, written, best uh, performed shows on television. It's, it's such a joy every week to, to get to watch this and have you guys in our house. Uh, and it's a joy to have you here. It's the best job I've ever had. I just want to say You can that. tell. It really you is. You can really, really yeah. tell that everyone there is just uh, giving 110% and having the best time ever. There is so much to be excited about this week. Uh, I looked up uh, the, the description for the episode. The title, So Swayze It's Crazy. Yes. Yes. It is about time. Uh, without giving anything away, uh, there's a lot of the stuff. Oh, I'm giving to it all away. Good. To well, this then let's crowd do it. only. Got it. You guys Burn are getting insider off. information. <laughs> so tell us a little yeah. bit. What, what can we expect? Obviously, some dirty dancing references. Can I be so bold as to hope for a Roadhouse reference or two? No. What are we looking at? No. Yeah, that's not happening. Here's, here's what is going to happen. Susie Essman is in the episode. Susie, Susie Essman, Jeff Garland's other wife on his other show. His other okay? TV and she plays a woman who exists named Edie Robb, and she's a talent agent in the Philly area. And the real Adam Goldberg wanted to be an actor, and he went to this talent agent with his mother and was told, you're not a leading man, you are a schlemiel. Like, I got two categories, leading men and character actors. Like, you could play a nerd in Revenge of the Nerds, or Meatballs, or whatever. And Beverly was not having it because she thought Adam was a Jewish Tom Cruise. Um, and, and she posts his headshots to this day, his teenage headshots, and was like, doesn't he look like Tom Cruise? Look at her Twitter feed. I swear she did that. So she takes him to this woman, and this woman is like, no, you, you know, your kid's, your kid's a nerd. And she's like, no, he is Patrick Swayze. He's not Swayze. He's so Swayze, it's crazy. That's the only reference we have. That's all it is. As far as it it's goes. like, my baby is a leading man. <laughs> and she just refuses to see Adam as he is, okay? And that is still the case. And I think, all, listen, all good mothers right. 
think of their children as the most beautiful, brilliant children in the world, right? Yeah, in her head, she sees him as he truly is. As he truly the is. The world. A model. Right? Yeah, yes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, and um, there's actually, you brought up a really great point. I was unaware that the actual Beverly Goldberg's Twitter feed is as incredible as it is. I, I discovered it very treat. recently. She's got, first of all, she's got her own Bitmoji thing going. She's got like, she's hitting all the mom check boxes. And then every tweet yeah. is like, Adam nailed that episode. So proud of Adam. Yes. Like it is perfect. Yeah. It's like required reading if you're a Goldbergs fan. You've got to find her it's Twitter. It's hilarious. She'll give you recipes. She'll give you information. She's at Goldilocks 405. Um, follow her. She will interact with you. She loves it. She's very, uh, very social. Oh, it's incredible. <laughs> uh, how, so I guess that begs the question of, of how much time do you or did you get to spend with the real Beverly at, while you were putting together? I didn't life. spend any time None. with her. All I had was the video footage that Adam would show me. Right. And I thought, okay, I know that person. I know that person. I get it. But I didn't meet her until about 10 episodes in and by then I was petrified of her because Adam kept asking me is it okay if my mom comes to set I said yeah whatever but is it okay sure a couple days later really is it okay I just want to be sure you're okay and by that time I'm freaked out now I yeah. don't know yeah but she was fine luckily she's happy yeah. with what I'm doing and oh she seems thrilled yeah the Twitter uh, posts are any indication she, she is thrilled. She yeah. is thrilled. Absolutely. Thrilled. And the language is correct. She has a spicy mouth. So I am, yeah, see? I like, I like a swearing mom. I, I do, too. I do love that moment. Uh, we get a little glimpse of it in that clip where uh, Beverly is just like, there, there are no other words. There are the yeah. words I'm using right now, right. even though we're at prime time on ABC. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's brilliant. Exactly. When, when you, uh, doing a show like this, you don't necessarily expect that out of any of the main characters. Was that a surprise to you, or did you bring that yourself to the, to the page? Like, that was a surprise, yeah. and we went deeper. I mean, when, if you watch the pilot now, Beverly was downright mean. Mm -hmm. And we had to back that off because no one wants to watch that show. Yeah. I mean, we'll take it if she's a little crazy, but at the end, she has to, it has to be motivated by love, right. which I think we're doing now. But I, I love dropping an F-bomb every, every episode. To me, it's hilarious. And we, we do an episode in a couple of weeks about a swear jar. Um, because Beverly is like, I don't talk that way. <laughs> Not once have I ever said anything terrible. And please, we all know otherwise, but I, I love that. Like, she genuinely just does not think she's doing anything wrong. Well, it's, it's so funny because uh, that's also one of those rare instances where because of how Adam grew up, there is video evidence to prove contrary. Oh, yeah. Like, you don't even need the jar. Yeah. It's like, you can just, <laughs> we can just go to the tape. Yeah, like, exactly, exactly. Just put all your credit cards in the jar because that's what you're going to do. <laughs> yeah. Is there ever a, uh, and I, I doubt it, but is there ever a fear Adam's going to run out of archival footage to put at the end of each episode? You guys are four seasons deep, and it never ceases to amaze me that these are pulled, I mean, like, right from what happened, like, verbatim, his life. He's got walls of videotapes. That's crazy. I think we're okay. Yeah, you're going to be all and right. And after this season, we're going to be five episodes away from syndication, baby. Woo! Come on. Oh. Feels good. Feels pretty good. That's pretty exciting. I, I, yeah. I, I'm not going to jinx anything. Uh, best of luck, but I <laughs> think you. it's a pretty, uh, pretty obvious outcome there. Um, so we were talking a little bit, uh, very briefly, about this backstage, but another great thing about this show is uh, just the attention to detail uh, that you can see. One of my favorite games to play is spotting things that I had when I was a kid or that my mom had. Oh, we had those glasses, or we had that plate, or something like that. Was there a surreal moment for you when you walked onto that set and you were like, oh my god, I owned these, or I haven't seen this in X amount of years, or oh, anything like, like that. Oh, like all the board games. Yeah, all, all the, the board, board games, games. All the old VHS movies. And one of them, you know, there, it's just a pile of VHS tapes. We picked up one at random, and it starred George Siegel. Oh. <laughs> the great George. He just got the great, star. Yes. Oh. George Siegel, the day after his 83rd birthday, finally gets his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Round of applause. That was... So yeah. luscious, because if anyone deserves it, of, oh, it's yeah, George it. Siegel. It's now, I'm lobbying for uh, Lifetime Achievement Awards yeah. from the Academy, yeah. 
and SAG and the Golden Globes, excuse me, no one deserves them more than George Siegel. Where are those petitions? I'm on. Let's do it. You've got, I don't know. got another signal. I guess, I guess it's I guess you to me to start, start one. I, yeah, I, I brought it up. I'll start it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's on yeah. you now, isn't it? That's, <laughs> um, Add it to my list. So with all of these little details, all these incredible things, is there, is there ever something or is there something that they haven't touched upon yet that, that maybe you remember from, uh, from the 80s that you hope to see there uh, on set or maybe touched upon in an episode or any kind of theme or something? Slim fast. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, they haven't done that yet. All, everybody here is probably too young to know about Slim Fast, but it was, <laughs> madam, you're very young and pretty, but it was, a, it was so stupid. It was like, drink a shake for lunch, uh, for, breakfast, for breakfast, for lunch, and then it's... shove everything into your mouth for dinner that you can <laughs> yeah, possibly you fit want. into your mouth. You can eat whatever you yeah. want. Uh, but all you gotta you do is drink these chalky, horrible shakes. <laughs> Yeah. What could go wrong? They're just chemicals. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd love to, I'd love to, you know, have Beverly like go on some insane diet because it's bathing suit season or whatever. And the great thing about Slim Fast is it made your gut puff out <laughs> full of gas. Yeah. So it looked like you were nine months pregnant all the time. It had these little stick skinny legs. So you look like the planter's peanut in a bathing right. suit. Yeah, you did. You look yeah. like Mr. Peanut. Yeah. Uh, I guess the intention was, though, to push you so far in one extreme. So when you came out the other side, you're exactly. like, well, maybe I did. Maybe I did yeah. lose weight. I don't know. Maybe it worked. So awful. I'm going to take this question a little yes. bit deeper. So that's the 80s. The show, uh, and I think in a brilliant uh, real move, it, it takes place in 1980-something, yeah. right? It doesn't pigeonhole itself into one particular year, but more so one decade. If the show travels down the path that I think it's on, and we eventually end up in 1990-something, mm -hmm. uh, what's something from the 90s that, you're, uh, that you would love to see them tackle or, or something that you remember? Oh, Maybe the that you 90s don't want were so... Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Well, look, we'll all be wearing bike shorts and blazers. That's, you know, that was a 90s thing, listening to well, En Vogue. I don't know. Well, I've got to but, say, uh, my, yeah. my whole thing is let's, let's concentrate on the family. Like yes. the, the, the trivia stuff, it's good as a point of departure for something bigger. So I got I to gotta rely on Adam for that yeah. stuff because he has very strong feelings about things. And, sure. you know, um, one thing that, uh, here's the thing. I do want to end up, I, I do want to see if these kids all get paired off. Yeah. You know, are they going to? Are we going to stick to that? Mm -hmm. um, no. Does Murray go to heaven like he did in real life? That's a good does, question. Does Bev start video dating? Because that is what she did. That would be hilarious. But I don't know. I'm just happy to work. Well, uh, I'm just happy I have a job. You, uh, you raise a great point. Is that, <laughs> is that you have a job? No, is that the trivia is a backdrop to this family and to this great story. Right. And, and uh, full disclosure, the thing that led me, like sort of the impetus of that question of like what's something from the 90s, was sort of envisioning 90s Bev wardrobe and like what, what Bev would sort right. of evolve into throughout that decade. Does she get the short mom haircut? Does she wear the mom jeans? Uh, wh yeah. What does Bev look like in the 90s right now? Because she's so much very, uh, has an aesthetic, if you will, in, in that wonderful array. Yeah, I, I really couldn't tell you. Yeah. Um, maybe she had a big spiral perm. That was a thing in the 90s. It but certainly was. I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, I'm, I'm sure the Clintons would play a big role. <laughs> That's one thing, and, right? For yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, to that end, speak not the Clintons, but the 90s, I, I read something recently that Adam said, I think just a month ago, that he turned in a pilot uh, for a potential spinoff with, yeah. coach, with Brian Callen's coach character. Yes. Uh, and in that same article, he mentioned that Beverly does appear in the pilot. That Beverly will appear. So I don't know if that's still happening, right. but um, regardless of whether or not that does... Brian Callen is fabulous, and oh, I so love his character. Tim Meadows will also be in this pilot. Our, our sad, yeah, our sad guidance counselor who has a parrot named Feather Locklear. Tobolowski um, as well. Will we so, get Stephen in there? To, do you know Stephen Tobolowski will be in there as well? I hope so. I love oh, Stephen Tobolowski, <laughs> our principal, Principal Ball. Yeah, so look, there's a, that is a rich well, all those strange Lost. teachers. Yeah, yeah, there's so much there. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess we could all hope for that. Uh, yeah, um, well, that we'll see. Fingers crossed we'll see if it comes out. Mm -hmm. uh, well, to that end, actually, spinoffs, 
I, I was wondering, do you have any favorite uh, TV spinoffs from throughout the years? Because I think what makes a great spinoff is great characters, as right. we just talked about. You have right. all these amazing characters that we hope go over there. Uh, so, so there's been tons of spinoffs over the years. But right. any, any that you enjoyed personally when you watched? I loved Cheers. And, oh, my God. You want to talk about funny women? Rhea Perlman oh, is a yes. gem. Yes. Rhea uh, Perlman you are, doesn't you are get enough credit. To applaud she's for one Rhea of my Perlman. comedy influences. And Shelley Long, yes, I mean, m magnificent. So I loved Cheers. It still holds up. And the spinoff, Frasier. Frasier. I think Frasier's the gold standard, Frasier right? is the gold standard. Yeah. And I mean, oh my gosh. I, I watch those shows every night along with the Golden Girls. Did you say Golden Girls? Golden Girls yeah. on Hulu I'm right sorry. now. It, yeah. Oh, please. I love me some Golden Girls. Did that not change I your do. life when they just put life. that on Hulu right now? So you know about this, right? Oh yeah. Well, yeah. first of all, I have all the DVDs. Well, naturally, you know, right? Uh, you are you're an original I, <laughs> OG. Come on, Golden yeah, Girls. yeah, OG Golden Girls fan. Um, so yeah, like those were definitely shows that influenced me and and that still hold up. I'm sorry, good writing is good writing, and right now, <laughs> the times being what they are, I just want to laugh. Yeah. I just want to laugh. I just want to be happy. I want to be taken out of my situation. So Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think we could all agree on that. Yeah. Um, but uh, yet yeah, speaking uh, uh, to that point of, of laughing and great shows and great mm -hmm. writing uh, and great casts for that matter, uh, we were talking about how there's this vibe and there's this obvious uh, 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 thing happening where you guys are all having fun. You're all connecting. It looks like a big family out outside of the studio in terms of you know, how you guys interact with one another. And then I was shocked to see you all just went to Disneyland. Like, did the, what, what happened? That was how did that come together? So great. Okay, yeah. well, we um, are owned by Disney. Of course. Okay. So um, they set up a nice little trip for us you know, we could each bring X amount of people. So we thought, all right, well, if, if our families don't want to go with us, let's get as many of our guest stars as we can because we, we're with them so often. Yeah. And I can't stress it enough. I love those people and I love every crew member. I love their families. I love their pets. <laughs> I look forward to seeing them after the weekend. We love each other. So yeah. to, to get to do that and I... I it, it really touches me that you can tell that we love each other that much because it's not fake. Like, I want to chew on their faces. <laughs> I want to chew on them. I, their concerns are my concerns. W when they're happy, I'm happy. I, I love them so much. So, yes, getting to go to Disneyland was just the most fun, stupid day. Oh, yeah. my God. It was great. It was like, I don't even care if we go on any rides. I'm just happy, like, yeah. just looking at you in real clothes. Prior to that visit, had you ever done that with like a non-TV family? Have you done like a Disney trip when like you weren't owned by uh, Disney or work for them or anything like that? Just like as like a normal person, so you can compare and contrast the experience. Oh yeah, listen, yeah. I can take side streets to Disneyland. That's yeah. how close I personally live to yeah. Disneyland, and I grew up going there all the time. So for me, like yeah, Disneyland. I've I've it's stood in the three-hour lines. I've, you know, I've, I've done the whole thing. Yeah. So, but let me tell you, I much prefer being taken in the back way um, yeah. and escorted on to the rides and not having to wait. Okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't think anyone Listen, I don't play that card very often, but if, if they want to help me play it, I'll do it. I think that's a card you I need to play. I recommend it. Hey. You, you need to play that card. <laughs> uh, it was fun. <laughs> So I wanted to ask you about, too, because uh, we there's just so much to talk about. We do have to go to audience Q&A in a little bit. But I did want to ask about uh, your work with the Creative Coalition, because yes. I think you're doing a lot of great stuff there. And I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about the Creative Coalition, how you got involved, how we can get involved, that okay. sort of stuff. So the Creative Coalition was formed to keep the National Endowment for the Arts funded. Mm -hmm. OK, very important. Um, these past couple of years, we've been just trying to keep it from getting slashed anymore. What we would like is for it to be at like the 2008 level. Yeah. That's not gonna happen. Although we did get a little increase this past year. All right, that's great. But now it looks like it might get cut entirely. Yeah. And that is a shame. That is a shame. When you look at how much money it takes to fund the NEA for a year, but then you look at how it gets spread across the entire country. It's really not that much. And you're talking after school programs for people, uh, major cultural things that, 
listen, the arts bring money into communities. So every dollar that you spend on the arts, bringing the arts somewhere, the arts will yield seven dollars to the yeah. community, just in ancillary businesses, dry cleaners, gas stations, coffee shops. Like it, it's worth it. So uh, I don't want to be too long-winded about it, but right now, yes, we are struggling, and we are trying to keep it from from getting slashed further or from going away entirely. And how we can do that is a okay, support the arts. Well, what does that mean? Buy tickets to things. The smallest theaters, the littlest art exhibits. Look what's going on in your community and see if you can at least just be an audience member yeah. or an Instagram it, okay? Hashtag it. When you go and see these things, send out on social media uh, just a short message about how, mu how much fun you had or whatever. If you can volunteer, if you are so inclined and you can volunteer with some of these groups, please do it because... We need art now more than ever. Right now is the time when we can make some really incredible things. And I'm sorry, but I, I want the American arts to be the best in the world. And there's no reason that we can't have that. Totally. All right? We've got brilliant people here. The, just the very nature of our melting pot society means we could have the best of everything if we all participate. And I don't mean to sound like you know, I'm delivering a sermon, but I'm delivering a sermon. Well, I, yeah, you I need think... to support the arts, because even yes. if you aren't artistic, being exposed to it unlocks so many other things in your mind, and kids need it. So, for some people, that is their lifeline. When I was in school, I was such a nerdy mess that if I didn't have my arts programs at school, I would have killed myself, okay? But I had that to look forward to. Right. Yeah, I, I don't, don't know. Uh, yeah. I don't think you sound like you're giving a speech. I think you've been yeah. brought to this point because when you started working with them, how long have you been working with them? Uh, for a couple uh, of years now? Probably four years four now. Years. So and when it's you a started... nonpartisan thing. We all yeah. need the arts. Everyone needs the arts. Yeah. I think it, it's it's really easy to see because when you started four years ago, I don't think anyone could have foreseen that the National Endowment of the Arts would be eliminated. Right? We never thought we'd have to fight that. Yeah. And so it, it, drastic times call for drastic measures. Right? And the art is, it, art is unquestionably important. It is our culture. It mm -hmm. is what defines us. It is what we discuss. And uh, as you mentioned, it, it pays, it's an investment that pays, uh, No, nothing else pays dividends like it. Yeah. You put a little bit in, you get so much back out. Well, I, I, I appreciate you and I thank you for working with that uh, with them. And, and how can we get involved? We can buy tickets. I saw there's a really cool t-shirt you guys are selling. All the yes. money goes to the... Uh, All National the money helps yeah. to, you know, keep the creative coalition fighting. But yeah, there is a, a slogan that they've come up with, the right to bear arts. Cute. Okay. Yeah. I like it. That's just cute. We all have the right to bear arts. So it's a, it's a, a, a t-shirt you can buy at the Creative Coalition website. But you know another thing you can do if you're so inclined. If you work with arts organizations yourself, you find out who your district officials are, your people in Congress. Tweet invitations at them. There you go. And just see what happens. Mm. Yeah. Invite them. Come on out. See what we're doing. See. And then I dare you to cut our funding. <laughs> Precisely. You know, See but get in there. Just yeah. get a knuckle get right involved. these people. Get involved. Yeah, get involved because again, this should be nonpartisan. Yeah. And and there are listen. If you have, uh, you know, a representative who has like a beautiful civic orchestra in their district, you think they're gonna you think they're gonna go against them? No, they're yeah. gonna buy tickets. They're gonna tweet about it. They're gonna you know get them to help. Exactly. The T-shirt is literally the least you can do. Yeah, it's that easy. is the very least you can but, do. But I, I do not. I do not want to undersell how cute this T-shirt is. It's a cute. It's adorable. Yeah, it's adorable yeah, T-shirt. Yeah. I'm gonna ask you one more question. We're gonna pivot uh, dramatically, and then we're gonna go to audience Q and A. Yeah. Uh, I saw you have two cats. Okay. I have five. You have five? I only saw two uh, when I was looking at Instagram. Well, you got to get a. You, you, get a you didn't photo treat going. yourself to the full. <laughs> I got. Yeah, I had to hit that load more. Full a few more thing. Times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got well, five. Well, I saw a Crash and Obi Wan Kenobi. Ad yeah. Adorable. Yeah. That goes without saying. Yeah. Uh, did you, are you the Star Wars geek that named Obi-Wan? Was that a group decision? Um, it, he, the force was with him <laughs> because he was found in the middle of the street as a three-week-old kitten in the middle of Western Avenue. His eyes were sealed shut from infection and someone found him. Oh. Okay, now don't get me started. I'll keep you here till tomorrow. 
I knew the cat. Talking about my cat, but I have five cats, all rescues. I love them. I love them. That's all. Okay, all right, fair enough. All. And yeah. yes, they they all have outfits. Okay. Yeah, I saw one dressed as a shark. Yeah, yeah, I saw one dressed as a shark. Dressed as a shark. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fine. We'll move on from the cat thing. Uh, that's wonderful, though, that you're rescuing them, and, and that's a fantastic thing. Let's go ahead and turn it over to the audience for some questions. I think we got a microphone in the room. The first one's yeah. right here in the front, or over there. Uh, hi. 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 Um, so you look beautiful. Thank um, you. Um, and my question is, what was your like top three favorite episodes to film in this past season and the other seasons, too? Let's see. I loved the Hands Across America episode, you know, where, of course, the Goldbergs are the ones who break the chain yeah. and ruin the whole Hands Across America. Um, I loved when I busted into my son's first dance because I wanted to watch him slow dancing. And I loved... Our dirty dancing homage. Yeah. yeah, I liked, I liked that um, a lot. But honestly, it, it is so hard to pick because I just I love going to work. I really love it. Has there but ever has there ever been something where you you read it and you go, oh Beverly, don't do that. Like, do you even do you ever get surprised yourself in reading There's, it? The length there have been a few times when I say, now I think that we're going into stupid territory. <laughs> I, I don't know how to, I don't know what you want me to do here. But then I always see it, and I'm never disappointed. But of course, of course. Yeah, okay. Uh, next question over there. Hi, Hello. Wendy. Hi. So my question is, what's your most interesting, memorable moment on set? On set um, at all, or just on the Goldbergs? On Goldbergs. Let's see. You know, it was it was so weird to have... Weird Al right in front of me. Because he doesn't look any different than he does in the 80s. Then he, I mean, because you can't really have those people on again because they've aged 30 years. Not Weird Al. And if anyone needs a beauty line on home shopping, it should be him. It's I would buy it. What is he doing? I don't know. And you, you He's heard... a wizard. He looks exactly the same. Yeah. It's, it's true, you're inclined to believe, oh, they put makeup on him. But then you see him in literally any other thing he's yeah. done or appeared in across 30-some-odd years, and he has always looked awesome. Yeah, and I'm, lo and I'm looking, I'm checking him out for, are there any scars? Are there, yeah, little needle? No, 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 nothing. Just healthy living, I guess. I don't know. It's gotta be, I don't know. It's the polka music. It keeps but, that's what it is. <laughs> Keep some energetic. That's the a secret, yeah. you guys. You heard it here first. It's the polka music. Polka music. Yeah. I believe uh, we have time for one more question. Uh, where are we looking? We got to have two. We got to do two more. We're going to do two more. Okay, so the first of our last two, two yes. is who has... Okay. I just wondered uh, what your favorite Beverly sweater was, because it seems Ooh. like every week they get okay. crazier. <laughs> um, that would be... A sweater that was that they actually had to make because the writers wrote it in the script and it threw our poor costume girl under the bus. But um, it had breakfast foods on it, and I wore it in the home ec episode. And it had like bacon dancing yeah. with toast and eggs smiling in the pan. I, I remember that one vividly. Uh, but, but people ask me, oh, you know, you must love it. No, I don't. Those sweaters are so itchy and awful. And all those 80s clothes, like the denim feels like concrete. There's no give. <laughs> okay. So you said... We, we got to ask him. We're going to ask him, yeah, but okay. hang on. Right. There's, yes, there's, yes, I have yes, a follow-up yes. about the sweaters now that okay. we've opened this door. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you said they had to make you this one. Do they make a lot of them? Or are those all found actual sweaters? Um, like, are most of them are found or from the real Beverly. But the writers will write in a special yeah, sweater, sweater, like a sweater with a bunch of other sweaters on it that spell out sweater. That was an Etsy thing. That's a great thing. Day. That's yeah. just a great joke. You got to do that. That they found on Etsy. Awesome. Um, but yeah. All right. All right. All right. No more sweater stuff. All right. No more sweater Let's go. Our, our final question from yes. the audience. Um, we've seen some Reno 911 characters on the Goldbergs. Will we see any more? And um, that's also on syndication, thank too. You. So that'd be your second That is yeah. in syndication. Thanks. You'd think I'd get some money from that. But I don't care. Is that our other petition? Come on now. Yeah. All right, I'll yeah, start that. I'll petition. let you start that. You one. start the George Siegel one. I'll start yes, this one. let's see. You know that that's just by accident, really. It it's not like we've said, oh, let's get some of those Reno people on. 
Cedric happened to be available and great for the part. Of course, now he's got his own show, so I don't know that we can have him back. I'd love to have him back. Um, Tom Lennon was on, but uh, that was just a fluke thing. So I, you know, listen, I'm, I love when any, when any of my friends come and, and work. So um, I, would, I would love that. But uh, that's not the answer you were looking for, is it? I'm sorry. Okay. I think uh, <laughs> as, uh, as a mutual Reno 911 fan, uh, yes, of course, applaud for Reno 911. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't ask the question, do you guys ever talk about, oh, you know, it would be so funny if we, if we did this again or if we got together and put that. I, I have heard that being rumblings. Yeah. bandied about. I like that. I like but that that's term. all I can tell you is that someone who knows more than me has mentioned it. For sure. Well, so, bandied about is, is sufficient. I think that that'll give us who something knows? to sink our teeth yeah. into for a little while. It's more hope than we had 20 <laughs> seconds ago. You know, so what is it going to be? Like a bunch of old deputies wandering around. It can't be a, it can't be a prequel. You know, so I guarantee you, I guarantee you, whatever it ended up being, we'd all be there to watch. It'll, it'll be weird, uh, whatever it is, it'll be weird. We'd expect nothing less, you know. Wendy, uh, I could literally talk to you all day, but regretfully, I have to let you go. The Goldbergs, obviously, every Wednesday, 8 7 Central on ABC. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, Wendy McLennan Covey, thank you thank so you much. Thank you for coming, everybody. <laughs>